Sprinklers, I suppose, are pretty essential and I can tell you from experience on a hot summer's day if you're walking down the street and one of them accidentally goes off on you, it can be quite a pleasant experience unless you're carrying your phone. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to gardens or should I say yards because that's the first memo really when Americans say that the dogs are playing outside in the yard that's equivalent to the British saying that the dogs are playing outside in the garden and actually while we're on the subject does anybody else 21 years later wonder if that person ever let the dogs in? Whoever it was, there's a safe bet that those dogs would have experienced a much different yard slash garden, depending on whether they were in Britain or America. And since, over the last year, I've done videos outlining the differences between British and American houses, kitchens and bathrooms, I thought now would be a great time to do the same thing with residential yards. And you might be thinking, why would you do a video like this right now when nobody gives a lick about their gardens? And the truth is, I miss having a garden. And also those videos are being picked up by the YouTube algorithm right now. So, you know, I want to capitalise. And so without further ado, here are those ways that British and American yards are very different. I love that sound. The truth is, on a warm summer's day, you really can't beat the quiet, relaxing ambience of either country's yards. But think back to summer, think back to your childhood. What is the overriding sound? It could be dogs barking or a builder putting down a mug. But in my experience, if you strip away all of that, the most consistent sound in both countries comes from things with wings. Across much of Britain, the winged creature in question is a wood pigeon. They basically, they hang out in people's gardens. That's what they do. And they make this noise that you don't really hear very often in the United States. And that noise is this. <coughs> Sorry to the wood pigeon community for that. And while we certainly have types of pigeons in the United States, this large bugger isn't one of them. Look at him. He's already had three courses. He's going in for his second dessert. Greedy bastard. On the other hand, when I think of the soundtrack to American Yards, there's only one creature that comes to mind. Chainsaw Jim from next door, but also crickets. Now I've talked about these excitable creatures before on Lost in the Pond, so I won't be propagating their sinful activities any further. But suffice to say that recognizable sound, so that was a bee, that was awful, is very prevalent throughout Midwestern summers. In Britain, the same is true of these. For a country that's reluctant to air its dirty laundry in public, Britain has no problem doing just that with clothes straight out of the washing machine. Now there are some drawbacks to doing this. Number one, the pegs can help deteriorate the fabric. And number two, it takes flipping ages. But on the plus side, it's eco-friendly, your clothes flap in the wind in a really pleasing way, and they end up smelling like Britain. But after moving to America, I was surprised to find a distinct lack of washing lines in people's yards. And that makes it sound like I've been snooping, but the truth is, I have. Now, of course, there will be Americans watching this going, we have a clothesline, because all Americans sound like Kermit the Frog for some reason. Or, we had a clothesline in the 70s, or whatever. Right, there are exceptions. And there are a couple of good reasons for this. Firstly, the United States doesn't do the whole let's have a washer and dryer in one combined unit thing. They just have really effective dryers. And the second reason is that in parts of the United States, homeowners associations have actually moved to ban it, citing them as eyesores that could devalue the property. However, a few years ago, several states did pass right to dry laws, which specifically forbid those associations placing ban on clotheslines. But even with a sharper gaze on the environmental benefits, America still ain't got nothing on Britain. Of course, if my neighbours are so reluctant to see my socks and my underpants and that mysterious Princess Leia bikini, perhaps they should consider the size of this. Firstly, let me clarify, if you're confused and you think the word fencing is used here to indicate that British people use their gardens for sword fighting, you're wrong. 
that was phased out in the 90s. Fencing as in the protective perimeter around your yard. And in Britain, front yards don't so much as have a fence, but often a brick wall and a gate. These walls can range in height from half a Danny DeVito to an entire Danny DeVito. It's also not uncommon in Britain for both the front and the backyard to be surrounded by a hedge. Where you might see a fence, usually that of the wooden variety, is in the back garden, and this is often replicated in the United States. But there are a couple of areas within the world of fences that America does things differently. Firstly, I was kind of thrown aback by the vast amount of front yards that don't have anything. Not a fence, not a hedge, not an army of gnomes. And on the one hand, I like this because it seems quite inviting, but on the other, it does encourage people to trespass onto Chainsaw Jim's yard. What Chainsaw Jim really needs is a white picket fence, something that's famously common to the United States. But one area where fencing tends to be more prevalent is the American backyard. And while this can indeed include wooden fences, there's one type of fence you'll see here that is not common in Britain, chain link. And I understand that most Americans probably don't give these fences a second thought. But to me, they're amazing. And one of these days I'm going to install one so tall I can use my garden to have a steel cage match. When I entered my first spring here in the United States, one thing that really stood out to me was the prevalence of sprinklers. People stick them out of their front lawns and we don't do this in the UK because our sprinklers are placed in the clouds. But because of a Midwestern climate that doesn't really lend itself to effective lawn care, sprinklers, I suppose, are pretty essential. And I can tell you from experience, on a hot summer's day, if you're walking down the street and one of them accidentally goes off on you, it can be quite a pleasant experience unless you're carrying your phone. Once again, if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you'll know that there are two constants, my confused expression and the fact that my videos always come back to size. And yards are absolutely no different. Let me tell you a story. When I was approximately one Danny DeVito tall, I, like any child, used to play in my garden. By Britain standards, this garden was of relatively average size. So whenever my rich friend from the village over invited me round to his, I couldn't believe that his garden was so big that his dad had built him a miniature railway. By Britain standards, this could have been the garden of a millionaire. Or not, because after moving to the United States, I realized that, no, this is, that's the size of every everyone's garden here. In that childhood garden I was banned from playing soccer because you're only ever five feet away from the kitchen window. However at my in-laws house in Indiana I don't think I could have hit the window if I'd tried and I did try. Now before we finish a quick rapid fire of miscellaneous items. Hanging flower baskets, which country does them more? Britain. Gnomes. Garden gnomes. Britain again, although you do find them in the US according to my Twitter feed. Barbecue pits, definitely America. I don't, in fact, I don't remember seeing one of those at all in Britain. We do have barbecues, but it's, we don't have the pit often. I don't think anyway. I never had one. Why didn't I have one? Mom? Dad? Bugs. I'm not sure that either country has more bugs than the other. They just have different types. Midwestern gardens will get way more mosquitoes, fireflies, things like that. Britain, you'll see more slugs and snails than you do here. Who has more flowers in their garden? Again, this might come down to the type rather than the quantity. But the, having said that, I think British gardens can be perceived to be m more flowery because their gardens are smaller, so they have to pack more in. Which country's gardens are more likely to have a pond? I don't know. The answer to that question is lost in one. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below if you recognize some of these differences or if they were surprising to you. And if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to my channel, make sure you do so at the end of this video so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. A big shout out to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye.